Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about a topic I like to call becoming transparent to overcome your problems or obstacles that you have in your way. This is a topic that you may have seen if anyone watches Eckhart Tolle. He had a video with a similar title at some point, which I actually only recently saw after I have been using this concept for quite some time and I actually called myself transparent. I used to think of it as being um, glass or something like this, but I just found that funny that he has also used this and spoken about it before. So if you've seen that video, I was not trying to copy it. This is really just something that I've used for quite some time and I think it would be really helpful if you are finding that in going through this spiritual process, you have a lot of ups and downs because I know this is common. The more that you kind of become aware and are more conscious of things going on in your life, like the more that you increase your frequency, you will experience more ups and downs. That's just kind of how it starts to go. But there is a way to basically overcome this so you don't have to experience it in such an intense way because I know it can be very frustrating to kind of have like very good days and then all of a sudden it goes to a very a uh, bad day and then you're emotional and it's just it's a lot so in this video i want to talk about also i'm going to relate this kind of to a few things in um quantum physics quantum mechanics whatever you want to call it uh, i just want to relate it to a topic that i found out about a little while ago that i feel really relates to this and it kind of makes sense if you are more of a scientific person so yeah we'll just get into this i'm going to use some examples in this video as well so first off when we are <laughs> trying to manifest something oftentimes we go about the techniques that many of us have heard of which are things like affirmations things like visualization and Mainly, I want to talk about affirmations because I feel like that's one that's just all over the internet, robotic affirming. People will basically do this because they know that they say the strongest belief manifests, you know, like the your subconscious has to accept the new belief for it to manifest. You hear this all the time. And this means that you have to overcome the old belief. Basically, like if you're thinking of a scale, you would want to put more weight on the side of what you do want to happen rather than what you don't want. And that is the way that you would get it to manifest is by overcoming the difference there. So the way that I like to see it, and I'm showing it in this video, is essentially someone pulling on a rope, as in if you were to play tug of war. And so imagine this rope. And I also want to point out that the universe itself is neutral, right? So nothing really has a meaning unless we give it meaning everything in the universe is simply neutral the universe exists kind of like in the middle where there's just no wrong or right there's no yes or no there's just just the middle okay so everything in the universe is neutral until we give it a meaning as in again good or bad um positive or negative things like that so you can imagine this rope where there's one person pulling on each side and they're both pulling with equal force and you can think of this kind of like your physical self and your higher self, or you can think of it like your reality and then imagination, something like this. So they're pulling with equal force on this rope, which means that each of them are pulling with, you can say like 50-50 um, strength. And that's what I have pictured here. And then, so at this point to manifest what you want to experience, you would need to pull the rope more to the side that you want um, to experience, which would be likely imagination, what you can see there. It's not your physical reality. You want to pull it more to the side of imagination. So typically what we do is we start affirming a lot, right? Like robotic affirming. And so by doing this, it's kind of like we apply force to the rope, like we start pulling on the rope. And I want to say that at the beginning, I just said that we start at 50-50, like a neutral plane. But for most of us, we are already leaning towards the side of our physical reality. Most of us have limiting beliefs, so we do lean towards the side of our physical reality. So although I wrote 50-50 on here, most of the time, a lot of us are starting at something like, you know, 80-20 or 70-30, something like this. But let's just say, for the sake of this, you're starting at 50-50. Then we see in the next photo here that 
we start pulling and you know we start firming a lot we're being consistent about it we start pulling to the other side now we have 70 30 so now we've got it most of the way to the one side and really you only need to affirm so much to basically just get it past the point of being on the side that you want it to be on like you just have to have most of the weight on one side so at some point this would likely manifest and the faster or the faster manifest would be really the um i want to say <clears throat> intensity of your belief towards the one side so if we get it all the way to a hundred and zero then clearly whatever it is you want to manifest is going to manifest you're going to experience it and it does work so it does work this way and this is by applying force, okay? But what I want to point out in this example that I think is really important that a lot of us forget about, and I used to forget about too, I didn't didn't know why this kept happening to me, the fact that during the time of you affirming for what you want and you know being consistent and all this stuff, you will probably find that you start going through emotions, that you start experiencing things. And I've talked about in other videos, this isn't bad. This is not bad to experience any of this stuff. You know, emotions are fine, like it is basically you bringing the limiting beliefs to the surface. But why does this happen? Why are you bringing limiting beliefs to the surface? You know, like why is that happening to you? And the reason this is happening is because of, we can talk about Newton's third law. It states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if object A acts a force upon object B, then object B will exert an opposite yet equal force upon object A. So essentially, if you start pulling towards one direction, now the other side is going to try to balance that out because the universe wants to maintain neutrality, it wants to maintain a balance. So if you start pulling to one side more than the other, now you're going to have to basically release some of the stuff, some of the energy from the other side, right? Because where's that energy coming from that you're putting into your new beliefs? It is coming from your old beliefs. It is coming from um it's energy that you were placing somewhere else so that energy is now going towards something else so basically you need to let go of the old beliefs to be able to use that energy towards the new ones so that is why you experience limiting beliefs coming to the surface that's why you experience all these emotional mountains as you're going through this everything just starts to come up because you have to let go of it to be able to move forward right? Like there's no way for you to move forward unless you let go of the limiting beliefs of the past because that energy is needed elsewhere now, okay? So what I want you to think about is like pulling the rope. So if you start pulling it really far in one direction, you feel like you're doing really well, just know that at some point you're likely going to experience something negative equally because you need to be able to release that to move forward. So again, it's not bad that these things come up, but it's just, it's going to happen. You have to be aware of that if you are using force in some way to manifest what it is that you want, all right? But then, now I want you to think about another example here. So we just talked about how Newton's law talks about force being applied from an object A and object B. So it's saying there's two separate objects, right? But if you can think about it, and what I've said in other videos is that you, your reality and imagination are actually one. So on this rope, I said you got reality pulling on one side, you got imagination on the other, or where you want to go and where you are. But in actuality, there's no other person pulling on this rope. There's no reality or imagination. It's just all one. So if you realize this now, instead of having a pulling competition with yourself, you understand that, oh my god, I'm literally just fighting with myself because reality and imagination are the same thing. There's no need to use force in this, okay? Because this is where um, the concept of non-duality comes in. It's where you realize that you, as in yourself, and the world outside of you are not separate. You are one and the same. Everything is you, and that includes imagination and reality. So now you see that there's only you. So if there's only one person and you got a rope, what happens to the rope? Essentially, you know, you can't pull on a rope, you can't create tension on a rope that has one person pulling on only one side. So all the energy goes to the side that you want to pull on if you are able to let go, okay? So it's like letting go of the rope. So instead of being in this competition with yourself, you realize there is only you. It's kind of like in the Matrix movie when they say, you know, there is no spoon, there is only you. 
there is no problem, there is only you. When you let go of the rope, you let go of that tension, that stress in between, and basically all of the energy suddenly flows to the side that you want to be on when you're letting go, when you're realizing that there's no need to be in competition with yourself. Okay, so stay with me on this. I'll use other examples to help explain this whole concept. But let's just say you let go of the rope, all the energy goes to the other side now. And so now you have the side that you do want with 100% of the energy, okay? Like 100% goes to your new reality. And this is kind of how I think of um, collapsing time and space. Because you can kind of think of it like if you were let go of a rope, the other person might fall over on the other side as well. So it really kind of works in this example. But you can think of collapsing time and space because you realize that there is only you. In regards to time and space, you are time and space. You, you arise above time and space when you are able to realize that there is no separation between you and your outer world. When you realize that you're not in competition with anyone except for yourself. And so you are the one that's able to let go of the rope, okay? So once you do that, again, it's like by letting go, you accelerate. It's kind of like falling. It's sort of like a trust fall or something. By letting go, you accelerate yourself through time and space and you immediately, you collapse time and space. And this is a process of, once again, like allowing a process of not trying to control the situation because anytime you apply force, it's going to be counteracted by force on the other side, okay? So you're always going to experience something happening in response to you putting your energy on somewhere else. But when you do it this way, when you let go, when you rise above, then things happen so fast that there really isn't time for you to have to go through, um, you know, all the emotional turmoil. You don't have to go through all these ups and downs. So my next example is going to explain it again in a little bit of a different way. And I have other things I want to talk about in relation to this. So just stay with me on it. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys so far. Leave a comment. Let me know if it is. Okay, my next example, this is one that is kind of similar to one that I talked about in a past video if you've been watching my channel for a bit. This is where I talk about essentially having enough energy to get out of a cycle. So having enough um, speed to be able to get out of a cycle. And this basically means raising your frequency enough to be able to leave a cycle that you've been stuck in. So it means, rise again, rising up above whatever you've been going through. So to get through a negative situation, you need to have your fre frequency being really higher than what's in front of you. So if you are reacting to the problem in front of you, if you are having a reaction to it, you're matching the frequency of the problem in front of you. And so what's going to happen when you match a frequency, it reflects back to you. It becomes like a solid, okay? So you can think of it that way. So you're basically going to reflect back that problem that you're experiencing if you continue to react to it as a problem. So when you're doing this, Sometimes what can happen is you're trying to manifest a positive outcome. You're trying to manifest that this problem is done with or you're getting over this problem or whatever. Whatever obstacle this is in your life, you're manifesting positive outcomes. So let's say you start to build up some speed. You start to raise your frequency. And this means it's kind of like a bike, okay, going up a hill. So you start to get up some speed before you get to the hill. And then now you try to go up the hill with that speed that you gained, okay? Let's just say it's a really steep hill and you have to have enough speed to go up it. But at some point, if you don't have enough speed to get over the hill, like at some point, if you react to the problem suddenly again, or something happens, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna roll back down the hill and you're gonna go through that same cycle again. So a lot of people get stuck in this process of manifesting positive outcomes, thinking that they're going to overcome this problem, like things are getting better, they get a good speed going, okay? But then eventually at some point, they react to something and they roll back down and then they get stuck again and it's just over and over it just keeps happening and this is where you get really frustrated it just feels like you know you can't get out of this and trust me i know what it's like to be there so really the only way then you're able to overcome your problem is to once again raise your frequency enough to overcome it which eventually can happen through continuous affirmation, continually trying again, at some point you're going to overcome this problem likely. But once again, there is a faster way to do it, 
rather than this slower process of ups and downs over and over. Instead of being the biker, you become the bird. So now instead of even worrying about the hill at all, you just fly right over it, okay? So think of yourself as completely rising above the problem. You become now a bird in the sky. You aren't even the biker, you aren't the hill. You're just the bird in the sky and there is no hill. There really is no biker. There's just you as the bird in the sky and you fly right over the problem. To do this, once again, you transcend time and space and you realize that, like I said, there is no hill, there is no person, there is no problem. There is only you. When you do this, you rise above and you're able to simply just move right past it. It's like dissolving whatever was in your way, okay? And I'm going to explain further now how this is possible and how you become so-called transparent, as I mentioned before. The way that you do this is essentially, like, I want to give you one more example before I get to my final kind of explanation of how this works. But think of you traveling across a mountain on a tightrope. Say you're walking between two sides, there's a mountain on both sides, you're walking across a tightrope, and this is how you feel you have to get to the other side of wherever you're going through. It can feel very daunting, it can feel very stressful while you're going through this, because really what you're trying to do is you're trying to balance on this tightrope, you're trying not to fall too far to one side or the other, you're trying to stay in the middle, you're trying to look ahead and keep moving forward, and all the while it's it's like any minute you could start to lean towards one side, you know, you could fall off and then you gotta start over, let's just say. It's a process, it's gonna take you some time to get from one side to the other. But then the way that you think of it when you think of becoming one with everything is that you first realize that the distance between one side of the mountain and the other, it may have looked long at first, but it's actually extremely short. There actually is no distance between either side. You're essentially standing on the same mountain. Let's just say it actually connects. So there is no rope, there is no distance between the mountains, but there was a perceived distance because that's what you were thinking when you were seeing yourself as separate, okay? But then when you realize that both sides of the mountain are actually the same mountain and that there actually is no rope, you see that you aren't actually going anywhere either. There is nowhere to fall off from. There is nowhere to mess up or lean too far to one side. You're just standing on the mountain. You're already there, okay? There was no moving necessary, but your mind thought there was. There's an illusion that there was a rope. There's an illusion that you did have to cross this very far distance to get to the other side, but this was all an illusion, okay? So this is the same thing as reality. We think that we have to cross something to get to something else. We think that there's a distance between us and where we want to go, but in actuality, we're not even really moving. <laughs> there's just an illusion that we are moving because of the way that we experience time and space in this reality. So really what's happening is you're just staying in place. And anytime that you want to experience something new, you simply shift into that reality. You're just there instantly, just like the mountains connecting, you're already at the other side. There's no distance between you and that thing. There's no traveling involved. <laughs> so when you talk about problems and obstacles, they don't really exist except for in the mind. When you're able to see this and you're able to understand it, then you transcend it. Okay, so in regards to actually transcending something and what that really means in terms of your state, in terms of what you're doing, in this reality, whenever you are matching the frequency of something, you reflect that thing back to you. So in simpler terms, you see it as a physical object, okay? So when you match the frequency of something, you see it in a physical form. This is just how it tends to work. But when you decide that you are one with everything, now becomes the point where there's nothing to reflect back because you're not seeing reality as a mirror anymore. You're seeing reality as you, as part of you. So this means also seeing your body as part of reality. You are simply one with everything. And the way that I like to look at this is I feel myself becoming almost transparent, translucent, as in things are just passing through you. Just like everything else in this reality, there is no solid form to you. 
there's it's only an illusion that you are a solid form it is only illusion that there is things outside of you another way you can look at this if you find this difficult to sort of wrap your head around is kind of again seeing yourself as transparent in a way kind of like a piece of glass and feel all of imagination behind you and kind of feel whatever it is that you are manifesting just sort of flowing out in front of you like everything is simply just coming from you it's just coming through you it's just passing through you because you are just part of everything that is here okay and once again when you do this it is basically like uh my last video where i talked about the double slit experiment and where particles can be in two different forms at the same time where they can be a particle and also a wave function so in this sense you are acting as the wave rather than the particle and we know that waves move much faster than particles and so in this way you are able to once again become kind of like one with all the possibilities that exist in this universe and you can transcend your problem because you don't have to be the one to sort of figure out what's going on you just allow things to happen you just allow yourself to move through whatever this is you basically become one with the problem you become one with everything that is going on outside of you by becoming a wave form rather than a particle and essentially we also see this as speeding up in time and space you move a lot faster because you are operating at a much higher frequency now the frequency of we could say the universe another way that you can look at this is becoming neutral so the universe itself, like I said, is neutral. There is no positive, there is no negative. So you don't force any sort of outcome. You literally become neutral to the entire situation. So anything that's going on around you, you simply just allow it to happen. I've talked about this in other videos. You just allow things to unfold how they unfold. And this doesn't mean that you don't have to take any action, you don't do anything. What this means is that any action you do take you take it with the full well knowing that no matter what you do while taking this action, it will get you to the other side of whatever you're dealing with. No matter what action you take, no matter what you do, because you have all possibilities open to you. When you are acting as one with the universe, you have all possibilities open to you. When you realize that there is nothing outside of you, there is nothing blocking you, everything becomes open to you. The universe will find any possible way for you to move through whatever it is that you're dealing with, okay? It's like moving through it rather than going over it. And I can also explain this as, um, I don't know if anyone's seen the movie Finding Nemo, where Dory is told to go through the, I think it's like mountains or something underwater, whatever they're called. She's told to move through them rather than go over them. And then Marlon decides to go over them instead. And then they experience all these problems. So this is what I'm saying is that rather than trying to head on deal with whatever you're dealing with and trying to figure it out mentally and applying force and applying, you know, affirmation after affirmation and then experiencing the same thing over and over. Instead, try to realize that your problem and you are not separate. There is no problem. There is only you. When you do this, you dissolve the actual so-called problem. Like it becomes translucent. It becomes to the point where you can just flow through it. And another way I want to explain this is it's actually been shown in science. At least this is the way that I sort of look at it. We have something called quantum tunneling, which has been more, I think, more recently talked about, at least as far as I know, like there's not a ton of information on it. But quantum tunneling is, I'm just going to read the definition so I don't mess this up for you guys, but quantum tunneling is a mechanical phenomenon when a particle is able to penetrate through a potential energy barrier that is higher in energy than the particle's kinetic energy. And this also cannot be explained by classical uh, science. So classical science, the particle would need more kinetic energy more kinetic energy than the energy of the barrier to be able to get over it. So you can think of particles that need to travel over the hill rather than through it. So quantum tunneling would be the particles moving through the hill. And the way they do that is again, moving in a waveform and they move through the barrier, which is so interesting because it doesn't have to have a higher amount of kinetic energy 
than the barrier itself. Like it doesn't need to have a higher energy, which is just like you with your problem. So instead of, you know, trying to raise your frequency to overcome the problem, you simply just dissolve the problem itself, have it become transparent. Like I said, like it's the energy of the problem itself. It doesn't exist. It only exists in your mind. It only exists as an illusion. So the fact that we can kind of see this in science is really interesting. So they say that the likelihood of the particle appearing on the other side this way is can be very small, but it's not zero. And they also explain it as almost like teleportation of the particle. Like it just ends up on the other side, which is super interesting. And the even crazier part of all of this is that scientists now believe that this quantum tunneling is actually faster than the speed of light, which is wild to think about. So I definitely recommend you to look into this topic or research it if you want more of an idea of it, but I think that it really helps to explain the fact that we do not have to always forcefully overcome things. We can just dissolve whatever it is. When you become one with everything, you dissolve any problems, any issues, everything. Simply just allow things to unfold and to trust in the way that they are unfolding because as with my other videos that I've talked about, you don't want to try to control outcomes. You don't want to try to control the whole situation because by doing that, you put limitations on the amount of ways the universe can essentially have you overcome this, have you um, experience a positive outcome if you try to control the narrative too much. So you want to release control, like I said, with the tug of war, let go of the rope, stop trying to pull so hard, and just, it's a matter of really just trusting that whatever happens, it's gonna be okay. Whatever happens, you're going to move through this. So it's not a matter of saying that you can't have an outcome in mind. You can still think of the fact that you want to overcome this problem. But what I would say is don't try to control the how, the when, the really anything. As much as you can leave it general, leave it general. And then that's when you are in that state of allowing. And lastly, when I'm talking about being one with the universe, the best way to go about this is by living in the present moment. Like I talked about before with the whole tightrope situation, even if you are traveling on a, on a tightrope or, you know, I talked about this the other day with friends, but when you're carrying things, like as a waiter, they always tell you to look ahead, like not look, you know, down or not try and focus on your actual self. You're always looking ahead forward because that is how you stay in a straight line, basically. That is how you don't fall over, you don't trip, whatever. You're always just looking ahead and I think of that with the whole tightrope situation because if you were on a tightrope, you can think of one side being like your reality, one side being imagination, and you know, you could always lean more to one side or the other, or you could just simply look ahead at what's right in front of you, and that's like your present moment. So if you can just be in the present moment, if you can just really just live your life, every time I say be in the present moment, everyone asks, how do I be in the present moment? <laughs> and that just means live your life, do things that you would normally do, like focus on what's going on in front of you right at this moment and know that outside of that, everything's taken care of, like there's nothing else for you to do, okay? So be in the present moment. As soon as you have decided what you want, like that you would like to overcome this problem or whatever, know that it's done, know that you're going to overcome this problem and now you just live in the present moment with that knowing. You don't try to control it at that point. And that's really all there is to it. And if you find yourself, you know, going back and forth, starting to think about it again, remember, remind yourself again <laughs> that that's allowed, that that's okay, because there is nothing wrong. Anything, any action you take, anything you do is okay. It is all perfect. It is all exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Like there is nothing wrong. There is nothing not allowed. There are no rules. You make up your own rules, okay? So that's something I would say. And when you are in the present moment, when you are focused on whatever you're doing, um, you're basically, you are in a state of neutrality without even trying. You don't have to force yourself to be in that state. It happens naturally. That is your natural state. So yeah, that's really all there is to it is live in the present moment. It's not as complicated as probably this whole video makes it out to be, um, but that's what it is. That's how you transcend your problems. That's how you become so-called transparent is realizing that there is no problem. There is no separation of you and what you're dealing with. And when you see that, then 
you see there's nothing really to overcome and that's when you just simply pass through it that's when you dissolve whatever is in front of you there is no obstacle there is no distance between you and the other side you and where you want to go there is no rope you have to cross you're just staying in place you're just deciding what you want to experience and you're going to experience that that's really all it is so yeah i hope this video is helpful I feel like I talked a lot about a lot of different examples. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Sometimes I explain this and I watch it back and then I'm like, oh, I should have said that differently. Or I know in my last video I had some comments about the way I worded something. So definitely let me know, leave a comment if something is confusing. Um, I may also start a Discord community. It would be like very cheap to sign up. It would just be where everyone can just kind of speak about different topics you can ask questions if you want you know everyone can kind of answer um let me know if that's something you're interested in i might set that up very soon with patreon basically you would just sign up to patreon and then you would be able to access the discord from there they integrate together uh so let me know what you think of that guys and yeah leave a comment if this was helpful and i will see you guys in the next one okay bye